Hello everyone and welcome to Education Plus. In today's video, we will be discussing a very important topic in B.Ed. and that is Achievement Test. I've tried to make it as simple as possible, also carrying every point that is necessary for understanding what an Achievement Test is and for making an Achievement Test. So let's get started. Achievement Test an achievement test measures what an individual has learned over time by analyzing his or her present performance. It also measures how a person understands and masters a particular knowledge area at the present time. So this is a very brief definition and explanation of an achievement test. To understand in simple words, let's take the example of a student in any class and the knowledge that a student acquires in a certain period of time is called his or her achievement and after that period of time is over the teacher will examine the achievement of the student and that test which the teacher conducts to examine the achievement of the student is called the achievement test okay so here we have in simple words whatever the student learns in school is called his or her achievement and examinations conducted to test that is called achievement test. So this is achievement test. Types of achievement tests. The first one, it is standardized test, which is usually in written format. And it is that type of test where the same test is given to all the students so that evaluation can be done commonly for everyone. So the evaluation process is common for everyone. And based on that, the achievement of student is measured. The second type is teacher made, which is totally in the discretion of the teacher. And common examples are the oral tests, practical and teacher made test can also be in written format where every student will have unique assessment, which means the test for one student will be different from that for the other student. So having understood the types of achievement tests, now we move to understand the steps for the construction of achievement test. The first one, making a proper plan and then preparing design for the test, preparing the blueprint, preparing preliminary draft to which we do analysis and editing, after which we finally prepare the final draft. And then we check for the establishment of standardization. So these are the seven steps for constructing an achievement test. As of now, I have only told you the points. So I have just pointed out the seven steps. Now next, we look forward to understand each one of these seven in detail. So the first step, making a proper plan. Whenever we set any goal or whenever we want to achieve something, the first step towards it is devising a proper strategy. Now that is the first step here as well in making an achievement test. However, when we make a plan for the achievement test, there are certain things that we need to keep in our mind. So let's see what they are. So making a plan is the first step in construction of an achievement test. Like I said, the following points are to be kept in mind while making the plan for achievement test in any subject. First one, level of students, content, objective and then maximum time and maximum marks level of students to understand this consider that the teacher is planning to examine the students of class 7 however the level of the achievement test that the teacher prepares is of the standard of class 10 students so that way there will be a disparity between the level of the achievement test and level of the students so this should be kept in mind whenever we are planning to make an achievement test we need to keep in mind the level of students then the content from which we are going to test the students the objective behind the achievement test what is it that you want to examine from the students maximum time that will be allotted for the achievement test and maximum marks for the achievement test these are four things that we need to keep in our mind Next, step number two, which is preparing design for the test. So having completed the first step, which was making a proper plan, the second step that we need to move forward to is to prepare 
a design for the test. Now, how do we prepare the design for the test? It's simple. We just need to keep four things in our mind and that is weightage to the objectives of the test, weightage to the content, weightage to the types of questions and allotment of the time. We make a rough sketch work of these points and on doing so, we prepare the initial design for the test. Now let's have a look at each one of these separately, weightage to the objectives of the test. So these are the separate various objectives that the teacher wishes to examine through achievement test. So knowledge, understanding, application, analysis, synthesis and evaluation. So we understand each one of these terms. So here the step that we are actually trying to understand is when we make the initial design, we need to keep in our mind the weightage that we are going to give to each one of this. I have given here a weightage of 20, 20, 15, 15 and 15 as well, where the first two 20s are for knowledge and understanding and application analysis, synthesis and evaluation. I have given 15 as weightage and total it comes up to be 100. Okay. So it depends on the teacher to give weightage to each topic. So if the teacher is very keen on testing the application skills of the student, then the achievement test will have weightage given in maximum numbers to this application part. So if you are a teacher who is very keen on examining the understanding, knowledge and evaluation perspective of student, then you will be giving more weightage to knowledge, understanding, evaluation and lesser to these. Okay, so that's how we give weightage. This totally depends on the teacher. Okay, and it also depends on the test that the teacher is conducting. Second is weightage to the types of questions. So when we make a test, okay, that the students are going to answer, there will be various types of questions objective type questions which will have answers of one word or roughly a sentence okay and then short answer questions and then the lengthy ones the long answer questions so here also you need to have it clear in your mind what is the weightage that you're going to give to each type of questions so for example 20 to objectives and 40 to short answer questions and 40 to long answer questions so this is example of weightage that can be given by one teacher Likewise, it can be different. So suppose, uh, say you are planning to give test to students, which will be for just half an hour. So in that case, if you include all these three, it will be very difficult, okay, to make an achievement test, which will be, which is possible to be completed in half an hour. So suppose you are planning to give achievement test for just half an hour, then it will be advisable to include only objective type questions or at the most objective and short answer questions. So here weightage will be zero. Okay. And here you can give respective weightages. Okay. So this is weightage to the types of questions. This too depends on the teacher as well as the subject. Okay. And also the rule that is followed by a school in framing a question paper. Second, we have allotment of time. So to various types of questions, example, objective type questions, short answer questions, long answer questions. Okay. So you need to keep in mind the time that you are going to allot to each of this. So first of all, you will have something called total time of the examination. So you will have total time of the examination, example, three hour paper, two hour paper. Okay. So here I have taken example where the total time is say, 1.5 hours so 1 hour 30 minutes so in 1 hour and 30 minutes it is a good amount of time so i can include all these three types of questions where i am going to give two long answer questions five short answer and 10 objective type questions where i know that objective type questions are very very short so it can be completed in a very less amount of time so 15 minutes here short answer questions will require a little bit more time so 30 minutes and long answer questions are the lengthiest ones so they surely require good amount of time so i give them 
45 minutes which is half of the total time of the test so this is how we frame okay or we make a rough design where we keep in mind the weightage that we are going to give to the types of questions to the objectives okay and the time that we are going to allot to each types of question so this is step number two which was preparing design for the test so step number three is preparing the blueprint so preparing the blueprint in simple words this step number three is to merge all the tables that we had made in step number two so step number two was preparing a design for the achievement test so for that we make a table where we make the estimate of the weightage that we can give to the objectives okay the weightage that we can give to the types of questions and then the allotment of time for each type of questions right so there we had tables and we put all those tables together and there we get the, the rough sketch or the blueprint so this is step number three so let's read what's here merge all the previous tables to get an idea about the division of marks weightage to each section types of questions etc so this is step number three after which we get the estimate of the content that we are going to have in the achievement test so next we have fourth step which is preparing preliminary draft so till now we have completed three steps where the last step was to make the blueprint and now we move to the fourth step where we do these four points and they are writing the questions of all type from the content so what are the possible questions that we can include in the test that we are going to give to the students we write all of them okay then we frame the instructions for the different types of questions there will be various types of questions like some may be true or false some may be long answer questions some may be fill in the blanks some may be match the different columns right so for each of the types of questions we will write the instructions which means we will tell the students how they are supposed to answer different types of questions then we check whether the time allotted is correct or not and then we again check for the difficulty level of the questions which is very very important so this will be our preliminary draft so finally we are writing down all the questions in a paper okay and we also check whether the time allotted is correct or not whether the difficulty level is matching the students or not okay and we properly frame instructions that will help students in answering the types of questions okay then we move to step number five which is analysis and editing so having made preliminary draft which is a rough version of achievement test which contains questions and instructions what we do next is we do its analysis okay and then after the analysis whatever faults are there we do the corrections okay whatever addition or removal is required we do that next and that is called editing so the next step is to try out the preliminary draft questions ourselves in test conditions to see if it actually is sufficient for the criteria of the assessment test whether the difficulty level is matched and to ensure that the paper does not strain students so this is exactly what is necessary to be done what we need to do is we have framed the questions right so we need to try it ourselves first whether we are able to complete in the time in which we expect the students to complete whether we can attempt the questions or not okay the difficulty level cannot be so tough that we ourselves cannot answer the questions that way students will not be able to answer and the purpose of achievement test will not be justified okay so here we do that analysis where we do thorough checking so for that also the preliminary draft is analyzed and reviewed with the help of others who are generally experts so here we check for any mistakes okay or any faults that we may have done okay we may have set a uh, more difficult questions we may have given more number of questions the time allotted may be less okay so that things will get corrected here in the fifth step so here we 
correct here we analyze the preliminary draft here we edit it and then we move to the sixth step which is finally we prepare the final draft so we have done the corrections of the number of questions the time okay the difficulty level after all that is done and after the experts have given the suggestions next we prepare the final draft so following the correction of errors the final draft of the question paper is made in accordance with the experts analysis yes and then ensure that the question paper is easily readable and understandable now final draft is the final question paper in paper format that we are going to give to the students in the achievement test so we need to have a look at it and ensure that it is easily readable it is easily understandable so that concludes our sixth step so sixth step very very important one is after having completed all the five steps where we prepared the blueprint where we made the preliminary draft to which we did analysis and editing we took experts opinions okay and suggestions we finally make the final version of the assessment test i'm sorry achievement test here so this is the sixth step so finally we move to the seventh and the final step for making an achievement test we have already prepared blueprint after which we prepared the preliminary draft to which we did analysis we did some editing and then we prepared the final draft and now we just have the last step left and that is we check for the establishment of standardization and those are reliability and validity we check for reliability and validity of the test paper of the achievement test and how do we know whether they are reliable and valid that's what we'll understand now so reliability means consistency of the marks when reexamined with the same question paper under the same environment which means that if i examine a student today okay under certain environment environment means timing okay the total time allotted etc so if i examine the student today and he or she scores say 85 out of 100 if i examine the same student under same conditions same environment after 2 days then he or she should score marks which are near 85 or 85 it should not be drastically reduced to 40 or 20 etc so that way our achievement test will not be reliable means you can't rely on the achievement that the test portrayed for the student right today he or she is scoring 85 and day after tomorrow for the same test if he or she scores 40 20 etc then the test is not reliable it is reliable if the student scores the same or similar marks means marks in the same range when reexamined okay under the same environment then validity means the extent to which a test measures what it was meant to measure previously i had discussed various objectives that a teacher can wish to examine knowledge understanding application skills etc so the test should be able to give a valid answer that the student has this much of understanding this much of application skills this much of understanding etc so which means whatever the teacher wishes to examine in a student that should be justified by the marks that the student score in the achievement test so that is validity okay so these two are the main criteria that we need to check after we prepare the final preliminary draft and if they are satisfied we have our achievement test so that's how achievement test is made so in this video we discussed what an achievement test is what are the types of achievement test and then we discussed the steps with which we make an achievement test so this completes our video thank you